Time now for an in-depth look at the market news this afternoon. And for that, I'm joined on the line by Mr. Daniel Yu, Global Strategist at Uanta Securities. Mr. Yu, good afternoon. Thanks for coming on today. Good afternoon. Well, stocks on Wall Street uh, started the week stronger on Monday. Uh, new record highs for the Dow and the S&P with big tech earnings coming up. Uh, shares of Tesla, for one, uh, up more than 10%, uh, now over $1,000 a share. What's the story today in the global markets? Yes, if you look at the U.S. market, uh, it is showing quite strong movement due to the strong earnings results. Uh, if you look at the Dow Jones, uh, it was up about 0.2%. S&P was up around 0.5 percent, and Nasdaq was up 0.9 percent. Um, most of the indexes are uh, breaking the record highs now. Uh, particularly, as you said, the Tesla uh, reached one trillion dollars level. Uh, um, uh, clearly, this is a quite of a big jump. Uh, if you look at just yesterday, uh, the the stock was up by more than 12.6 percent. Uh, this is because the uh, rental car company Hertz announced that it would order 100,000 Tesla vehicles. And also a lot of the uh, major tech stocks are announcing uh, stock buybacks and quite of uh, upbeat earnings numbers. The Facebook came out with uh, some good uh, investment ideas, uh, particularly re related to the virtual reality segment. Uh, all in all, we think that the, uh, despite the, all the concern about the inflation and pressure uh, that we are uh, worried about, uh, we are seeing a quite steady uh, interest rate environment uh, where the U.S. 10-year government bond rates at around 1.64%. Uh, it is moving upward trend, but not particularly that strong. Uh, and uh, we are seeing the commodity prices rising, but nevertheless now it seems to be in a more of a timid uh, way of rising rather than a rapid rising. So all this is resulting into quite strong movement of the, uh, the stocks uh, due to the corporate earnings. We think that the 3Q numbers keep coming out as it is. Um, as the numbers are well above the expectations and the level of the higher amount is about two digit plus, uh, which is clearly a very good result. So all in all, we think that this kind of trend should continue as the earnings season dipper um, towards the end of this month. And Korean stocks are strongly higher today, too. Uh, shares of entertainment and pharmaceutical companies doing especially well in both of the main indices, holding on to this recovery we've seen in the past couple of weeks. Tell us about the domestic market. Right. As you said, Kospi has been very strong now. Uh, it's up about 0.94% today. Kospi is up 1.75%, now breaking above 1,000 level once again. Uh, if you look at the what's happening to the net purchasing area, uh, retail investors are continued net seller. Uh, if you remember, the retail investors were continued net buyer while the markets were falling. Now markets going up, the retail investors are selling. Uh, I think that the uh, foreign investors coming back is quite strong uh, uh, indication that the market can go up higher. Uh, if you look at the dollar index, uh, it is stabilizing at around below 94 level, and Korean won also is actually stabilizing uh, well below 1170 territories, uh, which means that foreign investors would be maybe continue to be coming back and uh, purchasing the Korean equities. Uh, if you look at the particularly the semiconductor industry, uh, it has shown uh, quite a bit of recovery, and also the entertainment sectors and various other major sectors related to the global uh, competitiveness. Uh, we think that uh, uh, Korean companies are well positioned. Uh, so if you look at the auto industries, electric cars, then batteries, and semiconductor businesses, and even a shipbuilding side as well, uh, all is indicating that uh, Korean market can have some more room for further rise. Uh, if you're going into the next year, we think that the uh, U.S. dollar strengthening is not going to be happening. Rather, it should be weakening or stabilizing in the future, which means that the ample liquidity could be pushing up the emerging market stocks, including Korea and China. And we are seeing uh, continuation of interest rising from the foreign investors. Uh, we think that this trend should continue in the future. Uh, if that's the case, we should be looking at 
uh, quite a good year for year 2022. We can look forward to that. And the Korean currency right now is stronger, uh, much stronger than it was a couple of weeks ago. Uh, the one is trading at around uh, 1165 to the dollar, down from almost 1200 recently. What's behind the appreciation here and where do you see it going? Yes, as I said, uh, dollar index is stabilizing. It's right now at 93.8 territories. Uh, it did go up to well above 94 level, uh, but now it's stabilizing. Uh, a lot of people were concerned about the interest rate hike or rising trend of U.S. government bond rate maybe resulting into dollar strengthening, and that might be negative news for the uh, Korean stocks uh, and Korean won. But uh, as uh, I've been saying that the dollar might not be strengthening, but rather uh, weaken or stabilize. Uh, main reason for that is because with the debt ceiling going up, uh, debt to GDP ratio of U.S. rising to 120 percent plus. Uh, and also, if you look at the U.S. companies' earnings mix, um, the companies with a higher exposure to the international businesses are showing much stronger earnings growth rate, uh, about uh, twice more than the domestic related companies, uh, which means that uh, there is no reason for to see uh, dollar strengthening. If that happens, then that is negative news for the earnings growth for the U.S. companies. So uh, rather, we would probably see stabilization of the currency, particularly related to dollars. So having said that, which means that uh, emerging market um, currency would be relatively stronger going into the future, at least next three to six months. Uh, if that's the case, then ample liquidity in the global system should uh, probably move towards the emerging market, particularly China or Korea. Uh, we do think that there's more room for Korean one to appreciate. Uh, right now at 1165, 67 territories, uh, we think that there's more room to further appreciate to maybe as low as 1120 to 1130 uh, in a longer term basis. So uh, if that trend is a predictable and it is a gradual trend to appreciate, then we think that this is good news for the foreign investors' activities towards the Korean equity market. Well, finally, Mr. Yu, uh, Korea, the Korean economy's growth in the third quarter uh, falling short of uh, expectations, 0.3% uh, from the quarter before. That'll make it harder to reach that uh, target for the year of 4%. What do you see happening in the economy in terms of growth? Right. Uh, if you look at the South Korea's economy, uh, it expanded by 0.3 percent on quarter in the three months of September, uh, following 0.8 percent growth in the previous period. And it is below market expectation of 0.6 percent. Um, it was the weakest pace of growth since the second quarter of 2020. Uh, if you look at the details, the private consumption contracted by 0.3 percent as expenditures on durable goods increased, but service decreased amid the reintroduction of top of COVID-19 restrictions. Uh, and a fixed income, uh, fixed investment shrank by about 1.9 percent. Now, looking into the future, uh, as you know, the with corona uh, would be implemented. Uh, and if you look at it in the fourth quarter, I think that the domestic consumption, uh, durable goods services uh, would probably rise, uh, which means that the economic growth rate could recover uh, better for the fourth quarter this year. Uh, as you said, 4% uh, target might be you know, coming short, uh, but I think that you know, it's reasonably good uh, growth rate, uh, and we are seeing very strong export numbers and global economy recovery is coming to stay and if that's the case then the Korea uh, economic growth rate should not be too uh, uh, well uh, concerned and so uh, having said that uh, we think that 0.3 percent growth rate uh, should probably remain so year-on-year -year growth rate above three uh, percent below four percent it'd be probably more of a longer-term basis growth uh, so all being said that uh, we think that the Korea's economic growth rate it should not be a uh, hindrance to the overall uh, financial uh, markets uh, recovery that we are seeing right now. Got it. All right, Mr. Yu, we'll have to leave it there for today. Uh, thank you, as always, for sharing your insights with us. We appreciate it. Thank you very much.